you might not be watching me, which you probably are not. Fair enough. Subscribe button down below. Uh, but just so you know, like I always like using like some kind of custom launcher on my phone, and um, this is not one that I use regularly. But I was just like browsing around, like for fun. I was browsing around uh, Asteroid for like a launcher, see what's you know going on, if there's any like cool new projects, whatever, whatever. And I came across this quite interesting one actually. It's called Ion Launcher, and it's. I thought it would be a bit for more of a standard thing, but it's kind of its own thing, and we'll get to that. So when you launch into the launcher, you'll, it will first actually ask you for some permissions. It will ask you to give it like contact access, usage access, etc., etc. It uses these things to do its functions. It clarifies like what all of those things do, and whatnot. And uh, then you get in this screen, and this is um, like a dark, uh, darkened screen with your wallpaper behind it. Uh, on mine, it looks very, very just plain dark because my wallpaper is very simple, but it's there. The wallpaper is there, just very, very darkened. Um, and then you have an like an even more darkened, I think, or by default maybe it's the same app menu. And this is like all of your apps listed. By default, the icons are all like grayscale for some reason. The good thing is it does apply to all of the apps, but the bad thing is if the app icon is already like white and black, it doesn't really change and the rest of the icons, because they have colors, are kind of washed out. But then you can see something like Revolut or Qdelix or Yam Launcher, like these three really stand out because they are designed to be black and white, so the colors are way more like contrasty. Uh, and then uh, you can actually change this though, like if you go to the tweaks and you go to your icons, you can like control all kinds of things actually, you can like make the grayscale icons like not be there, you can make the monochrome icons and this uh, basically does this like Android thing, but it's kind of like doesn't support all apps and like this kind of whole themed icons thing, I don't really get it because it doesn't support everything. Uh, some launchers have a function to force it on everything, this one doesn't. So if you want like grayscale stuff, use the grayscale icons, uh, which are by default. But it also allows you to just have, you know, colored icons, which in my opinion looks the best. In addition to that, uh, you have this like kind of on the bottom, this kind of quick access menu. This opens, this like shows your most recent and suggested apps. So if you give the app like access to your app usage, it will actually suggest apps for you, and that's what this is for. Uh, if you don't give it that, it will just like show you the most launched apps, or like your last launched apps, most recent apps, whatever. It will also like, as you can see, there's only four apps right now, and that's also a setting. If you go to cards here, uh, you can actually like set how many suggestion apps you want. If I want only one, I can set it to only be one, you know, like stuff like that. Uh, it also has a bunch of other features, so for example, if I go to Spotify and start playing music, it does have a media player, which is not showing up. Uh, so this is one of the issues I have with the launcher, you have to actually restart the launcher entirely to be able to see the media player, which is kind of just sucks, like, if I restart it, it shows up. So this is kind of sucks, but oh well. Uh, but it's a thing you can do, and now you might be wondering, why is it showing up up here? Well, that's because these two are actually like shortcut places. So if you move an app here, you can put an app there. And you can also, again, in the settings, change like how many actually appear there. I think it's in cards as well. Uh, no, it's not. Wait, where is it? Oh yeah, it's here. A pinned grid rows. So I can make this only one. And now you can see this move down. You know, so you can like control this stuff. Uh, though it doesn't like auto remove it, auto size it, anything like that. Uh, so that's not optimal. Either way, uh, the apps mostly work, the search also exists, it's not, I like these bottom searches, they are very ideal, I like them on the bottom, it's more easy to reach with my hand, especially if I'm one-handed, so that's good on them. And if I search for something like, you know, WhatsApp, uh, it finds me WhatsApp. But it's not an optimal search either, for example, if I search for a cam, I'm looking for a camera, why does Telegram show up? Why does YAM launcher show up? You know, like these kinds of things. So it's like, it's not using like the basic matching characters algorithm for search. It's using some kind of more 
fancy search algorithm, but I generally don't like those, and some of the search results are kind of weird. It does seem to put the important things on top, and also actually it puts like app actions. So if I, for example, search for new, you can see that's just a calendar, new event, new note, etc. So like it is able to like do actions in apps as well. However, these are like sorted weirdly as well. You can see this app actions before some of the apps and it's just kind of weird. I don't really like that. Beyond that, one more thing about the app menu is that like if you scroll up and then you uh, like over scroll again immediately, like without a pause, it does not actually go up. Like I can just keep doing this and it does not go out. This is caused because it, like there's an animation, you know, where it like kind of bounces. During that, it doesn't count over scroll. I don't know why this is just an Android bug or Android feature. Uh, the only way you can really get rid of it is by either counting or exiting through some other method than over scroll. But in this case, over scrolling is the most reasonable thing to detect. And uh, the other way is to make the animation shorter. Uh, and they have not done that. This is just a default animation speed uh, for this. And as you can tell, like, it has this kind of just issue. I think most launchers have this issue, actually. Uh, either way, uh, like, it's it works quite well. It's quite nice. You can also, like, add in search to this, like, shortcut bar here and, like, all kinds of features. Uh, you can also control whether the media player tints. Uh, you can add labels to the things here. Like, you can customize some of the basic things. You can also customize the backgrounds, actually. So, you know, if you don't like that the wallpaper has like this insane of opacity on top of it. You can adjust it or remove it entirely. And you can also do it for that menu separately. So there's like a decent amount of things you can actually do here, but it's not perfect. It doesn't have everything that could be customized. For example, I can't customize where the search bar is aligned. I can't like, there's no auto sizing of this again. I can't like put the media player on top. I can't adjust where the clock is or the date. There isn't even a clock actually. There's only the date. I can't adjust where that is, like, placed, I can't, like, you get the idea, there's a lot of things I can't actually do here as well. Uh, the widgets, it supports actual widgets, which is good, I like that. I think for this kind of launcher, where there's space for one, it makes sense. Uh, so, for example, like, another weather widget, like this, and, like, it works. It appears to be the media player, you can't really control it in any way, though, which kind of sucks. Uh, it seems it only allows you to have actually one widget, like, that you can toggle. Uh, but it can be seemingly anything and anything works. I would personally make it, like, a weather widget, for example. Because uh, that's what would, what would be most useful to me. I don't use this launcher, I don't plan to, but that's what I would do. And yeah, I mean, it seems reasonable. The, like, whole menus are designed, like, you know, reasonably well. Like, the settings menu actually, I think, looks pretty good. It's, like, intuitive, it's well designed, and I like this kind of attention detail. This whole bar, like, it does what it says it does. The app menu does lag a bit sometimes, but it has apps. The one thing I also have that's, like, this is a very minor issue, uh, but there's another thing is that it supports work apps. So you can see, like, I have two R stores. That's because they are, one is on the personal profile, another one is in a work profile. However, the work profile that is not indicated. Uh, and, uh, and some launchers, the default one, for example, on Calyx or... Uh, lineage, you know, Trebuchet, whatever, these launchers do do that. This one, however, does not, so it does not indicate which one is uh, the work profile, which is main profile. The later one is always the work profile, but there's no, like, icon to show it. So that's one minor thing in the UI that I think is imperfect. But, yeah, I mean, it's a solid launcher. I think it has kind of a different workflow with the whole one widget thing and the quick access bar in the bottom, you know, it's, and I like how bottom aligned it is. There's like info on top, but even the apps are like kind of moved the bot towards the bottom, the search on the bottom. Like it's very one finger or like one hand usable. I can just like kind of go here and type with one hand and then it will show up. And it's like, it's, it's a good, like, I think well-designed launcher. It has some weirdness here and there. I don't like that work profiles are not, you know, shown. I don't like that. I mean, point is, it's like, it's a pretty good launcher. I like it, but I do think there are some flaws. And I think the default look, although it like touts itself as being really good looking by default, I don't think the like grayscale icons actually look that good. I would prefer them colored. Uh, I also don't really like the dark backgrounds. I think my wallpaper would be my preference there. 
uh, I don't think it actually looks that great by default, but it's very easy to adjust, it's very easy to configure, uh, so I do appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate, like, attention to detail in the designing and, you know, why not like that? I mean, there's some things, but generally it's very solid, so good job whoever made this.